in the world. Those who understand and those who don't. Yeah, there are. All right, guys, so what do you guys want to talk about? Um, today is Tuesday. It's 6 p.m. It's still freezing. I don't know why you guys don't believe me, but it's freezing in California. We actually have the heater here in the office because... I don't know, I think maybe our 57 degrees is colder than your 57 degrees. Either that or we're just wimps here in California and we don't know what we're talking about. But it's freezing um, and we're not happy about it. We want our sun back and um, it's gonna be it's gonna be good once the sun comes back. Um, all right. It's live! Um, People, all right. are they not asking questions? No, no, not really. No questions? No questions yet. We don't have questions. Okay, so that means we're going to tell a story. <laughs> story time. Um, Drunk Brown says it's 20 degrees in Omaha. <laughs> but they're 20 warm degrees, right? I mean, it's not the same as here. <laughs> These are really cold 57 degrees. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, all right, I, I, I was shooting the vlog today and it's about uh, me finding a new, getting myself a new computer. We'll get to see that one hopefully tomorrow if I get to edit it. Um, and then today we were talking about IMDb page, which is a big deal for us. If you don't know what that is, I guess you'll just have to watch the vlog and then you'll get to, to see what we're talking about. Um, uh, in other news, I think I'm just kind of busy doing all the orders and stuff, but I am gearing up to uh, do all the stuff with, uh, with the EVs. Uh, yesterday, I, we said I wasn't planning on making a video, but then last minute, someone showed up with an electric car, and it's crazy because the, they are, have been around and I never knew about them, and I suspect that there's quite of those electric cars around, and we don't know about them because they're just people are just kind of tired of uh, talking about it. You know, they they just work. It's just like my samba. It just works. I don't have to mess around with it, which is not good for you guys that I'm not making videos about the samba because I'm not fixing it all the time. Um, and uh, but it's good for me because then I can you know drive it around and not have to worry about it breaking down or whatever. Um, there are some people that are, uh, that have commented in the video, like, why don't I just put, like, a generator in a trailer instead of the batteries? So I'm talking about the video that I made two weeks ago in which I, I laid out the plan. And basically, the plan is which way I should go. And I think, I mean, it, ultimately it's going to be up to me and how busy I am and how you know, how much drive I have to, like, I want to put all those batteries in the floor. That's what I want to do. I don't know if I'm going to do it now for this trip. Uh, maybe. But ultimately, that's the goal. And the goal is to get rid of all those yellow bricks because they're heavy and they're big. And, and they're, I mean, and they're just, they're... They're more of liability than, than, than the Tesla packs. Here's the thing that I discovered. Uh, those batteries, every single connection between each cell was made by me with two giant, you know, 716s or I think 716s bolts and a big strap of copper. Um, that's a weak point right there. I, I trust those less than the individually plates that Tesla put inside of these modules. So that's another reason why these Tesla modules work. I mean, not if in, that anybody is asking, you know, how these Tesla modules are better, are like, you know, among the best batteries that we can get our hands on today at any price. Um, but I keep making the point is like, there's a lot of reasons why these little batteries are so awesome. It's like every two modules, about 84 uh, pounds in a little package of, you know, this big that you can kind of wrestle Gary. It's a, a battery on its own. It doesn't have enough capacity to maybe drive a whole car because then you'll blow all the fuses. 
but it is a thing that you can install and remove and you know if it ever goes bad then you can you know it's usually going to be isolated to you know hopefully to one or two or a few modules and then you can remove them and so that's the reason why these modules are so great they're lighter than the lithium iron phosphate there's and so that's why i want to put them in the thing but some of the comments keep popping up and they're saying like why don't i just put a you know why don't i just put a generator in a little trailer and yeah that 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 totally could work if i get a, a gen I, any, actually any generator of any size would create energy that i can use in conjunction with a battery to propel the vehicle but i essentially i wouldn't be missing the point of the whole project i am not really figuring out just how to get the samba to you know to go 100 miles i mean if if that was the point yeah i'd yunk all the stuff out and put a you know a bw engine on it with the extra large gas tank and then <laughs> it'll keep going you know or 500 miles <laughs> so so that that is not you know yeah there's ways of doing it and i understand that there's practicality there that is exactly how my chevy volt works it has an onboard generator and it works really good it's a i think it's one of the best electric cars it's the number two best electric car in the world. I won't say that. Maybe the, the Model S is the first one. My Volt is the second one. Why? Because it's cheap, it's affordable, and it works right now. And it works for everyone. You don't have to know anything about electric cars. You can just get on it and drive it. When it tells you you need to like charge, you can charge it, or you can choose to put gas on it. It just goes. And so it's a perfect, if you want to uh, drive it as a, as a regular gas car, you can. If you want to take the challenge and drive it only as electric, then you can attempt to do that like we, my wife and me are doing. 99% um, of our driving is electric. So it is currently the best, you know, affordable. It's the only affordable electric uh, 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 electric car. Um, the Leaf, it comes in a three just because at no point you can drive more than 80 or 90 or whatever is the mileage range that it has. And so it's got limitations. This thing, the Chevy Volt doesn't. And so, um, all right. So some of the questions are starting to come, come up. Um, no, Darren sorry. says, I like the plan. It's not harder, easier to build a two structural floor battery packs that you can slot in and out of the floor. One for a battery wall and one for the Samba interchangeable. That's a long sentence. So I'm saying, is it not harder or oh. easier to build like a two structure floor battery pack? Like something like a drawer. Oh, like and a drawer that you can put it in there. the thing into the Samba, right? And then you pull it out and you put the next one like another battery. Oh, I see. Like and an interchangeable giant, battery. Interchangeable battery. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's possible. Um, I, I, it's it. Is it easier than the, than the little trailer? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think that would be harder. You got to. First, you need to have two batteries. Yeah, you have to, to have that. two batteries. And, that's already, like... and then big batteries. You know, so uh, you know, things start st are adding up. You know what I mean? Like, there was a guy that pulled up next to me today, and he's all like, "Hey, you want to sell that thing?" And I'm like, usually I say several things, right? I say either, I say, if I don't want to talk to the guy, I don't have time. I say, no, it's not for sale. Thank you. And then, you know, I move on. But if I have some time and I feel like talking to someone, then I go like, yeah, if you offer me stupid money, I'll take it. You know, if you give me $100,000, I'll take it. Um, today, I, for some reason, I told the guy like, no, you know, it's like, it's not for sale. Uh, and then he goes, I'll give you $50,000. And I was like, what? I'm like, 50000 I go, I got more in that in parts. I'm like, that's how much I got like in batteries in here. Like, And then he, he, he went on and offered more. I think he was serious. And then, you know, when I realized that he was serious, I kind of took off. I'm like, I don't, it's, it's just too tempting. You know, I need money right now. So, uh, so anyways, batteries are expensive. And so... Uh, when I added up all the, the all the parts that have gone into the Samba because I needed to 
uh, buy insurance for it after, you know, after my whole de interaction there with the cops and stuff. Um, then I realized how much money is in there. I, I got over $60,000 worth of equipment in, the, in that thing. I didn't pay for all of it, but it does have a value. Like, that is the retail value of all the parts, over $60,000. Most of it is batteries. And so, it, in a world where we have more batteries and we know what to do with them, yeah, then you, we can start getting, you know, we can start getting, um, we can start making sort of like those projects where, you know, we have two batteries and we inter swap them, interchange them or whatever. But for right now, the one battery is what we got. You either have it, I'm using it for your house or you're either having it for your car. And I think making the same battery work for both applications I think would be a cool thing that a lot of people would be interested and it would make sense to a lot of people and I think that's the reason why I come kind of taking that project I don't like I said I don't really need to do this thing to get to my destination for the show but I feel like I need to move this project further you know we already made it now you know what's the next thing is it do we want to make it in 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 um uh, in one shot, yeah, that that it might be like the thing that we try to do. I don't think we're ready for that this year, but this year maybe we can try the proof of concept on this little trailer. And like I said, there's some people that were jumping, you know, that were saying in the comments like, hey, you, you know, why are you trying to take credit for this thing? Someone else has tried it, someone else has done it. Um, that might be the case, I just, I don't know about it. I don't, I seen pictures. Um, I might have even seen a thread on some forum or something. I don't remember the details. I don't ever remember watching a video about it. I don't remember someone explaining in detail how and why to do this thing. So that's, you know, when there's, when there's a vacuum there, then I'm going to fill it. I'm going to be the one that puts videos. Which brings me to another thing. With... The absence of the EV show and the, um, I guess Jack is still making videos. I just saw one last week, um, but he's not doing them like he used to do before. And then I was checking on my uh, subscriptions on YouTube and then like Anna from, you know, from Kloppenberg, from Amst Amsterdam. He's only uploaded like one little video in like the last six months or something. And it, and it was nothing like what he used to do before. I guess I'm it. <laughs> I guess that's what I'm, I'm getting to the conclusion. Um, you know, like when everyone else is doing less, I'm like, I'm going to do more. Sure, I, not everything could be about EVs and what you guys want to hear. But I got other, you know, interests and stuff, and I'm going to go for it. And I'm going to make more videos, and eventually, it's, you know, hopefully there are going to be more of the stuff that you guys want to see. And so that's what I'm trying to do, and it's been working. Uh, my channel is growing. Uh, there's, there's more subscribers. Uh, there's more comments. There's more views. There's, you know, everything is, it's kind of working. Um, there's more work. <laughs> Less sleep. But that's all good stuff, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm learning a lot. Uh, and those are the, st the stuff that I'm learning. That's the stuff that I'm going to be sharing with you guys on the daily vlogs. If you guys are not interested in that, then you just subscribe to our, you know, eSamba. Anything that's related with the electric stuff, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to include it in the, on the electric Samba project um, um, playlist. And so then if you subscribe to that one, then you get your the notifications that there's a new video there and stuff. Oh, look at that. Dead freaking son is back. He made another account. Um, forget about that. Nice. Let's, uh, you want, the drunk ramen guy is asking, like, he wants to convert an EV truck, right? But he keeps seeing new tech uh, coming out that is like, that he thinks, oh, that's probably going to make things a little bit easier. Uh -huh. um, so he's like, do you think it's worth waiting a few years before doing it? Like for, he's like, you know, maybe there's better, simpler things coming out that is going to make the conversions going to be like way easier coming um, up in a few years. But what do you think about that whole thing? Yeah, no, yeah, definitely technology is moving um, 
faster. Man, this light sucks. This light kind of sucks in here. Um, yeah, definitely technology is progressing a whole lot. Like, I'll give you an example. Uh, I made the mistake of buying my motor directly from the manufacturer, HP VS, because they're down the street. The guy literally is my neighbor. Um, that was a big mistake because one, he has this weird policy where like if you don't buy it through a, a retailer of his, he'll sell it to you for more. I, I paid like almost a thousand dollars more for that motor. I yeah, I wish she would have told me that. I would have been like, well, screw it. I'm just going to go down there and buy it from Michael down at EV West. But the whole reason why I was going to go and buy it, I mean, it, like I drove over there and picked it up uh, on the truck. You know what I mean? And I, I mean, I don't know. Whatever. I, sh I should have kind of done my research or whatever. Um, You're so soft. Oh, and the, the thing? The... Sorry. All right. Oh, let's open it up. Oh, there we go. Um... Anyways, even if I had bought it at the the lowest price or whatever, the street price that that thing was available, now it's like, I mean, it was like a year after that, it was, it's less, like $1,000 less, you know what I mean? So now, two years later, it's like $2,000 less. So I paid $2,000 more than what it retails right now. Um, and so that's just the motor, right? And the batteries is the same thing. Um, batteries are, are cheaper now. There's more of them. They, now you can buy several. You can buy Leaf batteries. You can buy these Tesla modules. You can buy those the original bricks that we were getting. You know, um, there you, you, there's going to be, you know, the Model S batteries and stuff. Um, so, so definitely it is going to be easier and but and more would choices. You wait to, why would you want to wait two years? Yeah. to start working on a I mean, project. The only reason why like, you would want to wait. If it was easy, I mean, he's looking for like the wrong thing. I think. <laughs> no, it's easy enough. It, it's just it's just quite a little bit expensive. It's not hard. Look, it's not hard at all to make an electric car. Um, I mean, I I know I chose one of the easiest ones. The 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 the, the BW platform. It's four bolts. You bolt it on, and then, but. Uh, it doesn't have power steering, doesn't have any of that stuff, right? And so it's a classic car. It's a, among the easiest, and and a BW, it's it's among one of the easiest. So even dealing with all that other stuff, with the with the power steering, with the AC, and all that other stuff, I still think it's not it's not hard to make an electric car. Um, it's not necessarily like a whole lot of work. It's just expensive. And so if you don't have the money to do it now, yeah, I guess, yeah, waiting might be a thing that might put you in a place where now you can do it. Mm -hmm. um, but that would be the only reason. Like, I think I know, I know the other reasons are kind of valid. Uh, te technology is going to be better uh, in two years. But, you know, yesterday I was just looking at a car that has been on the road for, I, I don't know, more than five years. Five years at least that the guy's known about it. And it's still rolling around, you know? And this is all tech. This is like lead acid batteries and, you know, and a DC motor and a DC uh, controller and stuff. So. Okay, so if he's waiting because of money, then I guess, yeah, it's gonna get cheaper. But, yeah. You know, if he's waiting because things might be easier, then just do it now. Cause it's yeah. Already kind of if you can afford it, do it now. It's uh, it's cool. It's a lot of fun, and you know, and then you get to be driving around an electric car that much quicker. It's a lot of fun. Um, I I've been thinking about the the how much I enjoy driving the the Samba, and how it doesn't come across. I don't think in my videos, and so that's that was the whole reason for me trying to do that little intro. On the, on the last two episodes ago, on the two video that I put out, um, I don't know. You know, I don't. I don't. I don't feel like I. I. I achieved the thing that I wanted to do, but it was. It was just towards the right direction. So I want to do that because I really want to show you guys how fun it is to get on a car that you've worked on. So a lot of you might know if you've like our mechanics or you're like you know if you've worked on a car and 
build it, paint it, you know, upholster it or do something to a car. You work and pour your, your, a lot of labor uh, and your soul into a project, into an, an automotive project, and then you get to drive it. It's fun. And, and you know, it's like people look at, at it and like, they like, why are you driving this piece of junk? It's not, you know, the doors are falling off. And even like that, it's, it's an amazing feeling to be driving around. And I'm going to keep trying uh, to capture that on camera. So that to give you guys an idea what it is to be to drive around here, and I th and we have and by the way, uh, well, maybe we should uh, announce the the plans. Finish your talk. Uh, we it, it, to do that, we are going to like do some show where we like get people on the samba and get to drive around. Um, that idea has been coming around for a long time. We were going to try it with the EV show, but then you know we never did it. Now it's on hiatus. I don't know when it's coming back. I think we're just gonna go ahead and do it, and it's it's gonna be cool because then you're gonna get to see more, like people's other people's reactions, you know. Like I kind of get on the car and drive around, and I never really talk about it. But yeah, do it, do it, experience it for yourself. You will you will know and understand what I'm talking about if, if says, you don't. Fair enough. I'm gonna start looking for an old F100. Uh, um, so basically, you're con you're convinced them to start. <laughs> Okay, another guy, Leon Crofter, I don't know, Leon. Leon. He's saying, um, he goes, why not sell the same stuff that EV West store sells and talk about it more so more of us um, would be willing to do the DIY thing. So, like, why don't you just start another store? Oh, I see, I see. Like EV West does. And then, since you're the guy talking about them, yeah. And it, like, kind of promote this idea and get people to buy the stuff and oh so i see, see that's you know you wanted to kind of talk about that whole subject like yeah, well, yeah. we have friends that already have a store <laughs> yeah yeah so so my main my main reason for not starting a a parts uh, what would that be a retailer you know a diy electric vehicle parts store it's uh one, because the at very close proximity to us is there's there's EV West, right? And they're doing a good thing. Well, they were doing a lot more with video. I think they're you know maybe they're, they're just so busy right now. They're a victim of their own success kind of thing. Um, and so that was the reason why I didn't do it. But uh, another real reason is the, is the fact that I just don't have the capital to start up a you know a retail. Uh, I can't stock a lot of stuff. You know, it's like. Like the the stuff that I sell for for Jag is you know there's there's little parts you know I paid you know anywhere between five and ten dollars for each one of these things so by the time I'm selling a product that's got you know twenty of these components or whatever I'm looking at a you know anywhere from a hundred to five hundred dollars worth of parts and I'm you know and so my inventory it's it's not a whole lot of money. Um, I mean, it is in the tens of thousands of dollars, but in the EV, in the if I was stocking EV parts, it would be in the, it had to be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so, look, I, I know if I come across like kind of bitter when it comes to the whole dealing with with Jack and stuff, that's part of the reason. You know, it's like when I went over there, I I was completely open to like kind of work with him. I'm like, hey, I think what you're doing is great. I have a lot of experience in retail, in online retail, and in, in markets. You know, I'm I do that in marketing and all this stuff. stuff. And he kind of just shot me down, saying like, "Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. That is not what I want to do." Uh, then he went ahead and kind of like tried to exploit and with the thing that I did know how to do, which was make videos and kind of do the thing. And um, never by the way never giving me any credit and never and so that's the reason why you know what i mean and so th there there was an attempt on my part to kind of partner up with some of these guys that are kind of doing it and figuring out some way where i could fit and stuff and it just never worked out um on his side i'm grateful that it didn't happen because i don't like the guy because he you know he's just not a very good person in my opinion um and it would have been a disaster trying to work with him uh and it's better that it just happened kind of this way 
Um, but that is that is a real reason. I haven't I haven't been able to to take someone else's money and kind of do a project with it. You know, like I never had any investors on Jack Thirty Five. Kind of been working just with my money that I had in my pocket originally, and then I grew that enough to. But you know, it's like it would have been. I'm still at the point in my business career where now I need to learn how to take investors and partners. And so I'm trying that in several of the projects that I'm doing currently, like this crash car stuff. You know, it's like we have a bunch of this equipment that we bought and a bunch of this equipment that we're going to buy, but it's not using my money. It's This is being funded by someone else. We are doing our part. They're doing their part and funding it. it be, you know, it's, it's it's someone else's part, uh, which is cool because then we can get to kind of work and stuff. And um, the retail thing may might come in the future. I don't know. Um, I have a. I know that Michael does a great job doing running his little business. The reason that's the reason why he's he's super busy. And maybe like the thing that we need to do is just kind of be the voice for maybe uh, Evie West. And that's what we were trying to do with the Evie show, you know. So so there's ongoing projects that are heading that way. Um, I know I know that the thing that I want to do is is has to do with video. And that's the reason why I wanted to build my own channel and then get into production and just kind of learn how to do all this stuff because it... It, even if it doesn't, I feel sometimes it doesn't come natural to me. I feel inclined to do that and I get satisfaction. That's the thing that I want to do right now. I welcome all, um, you know, like all the opportunities that will come that is going to be doing video in the EV realm because I feel equally passionate for those two things. And so, you know, I'm going to figure out a way to merge those two and and do the thing that I want to do with those two. Uh retail stuff, I'm kind of burned out to give to, to <laughs> tell you the truth also. Um it's like technology is ever evolving and like I feel like it, it was exhausting trying to catch up with like the latest camera and all the the new features and stuff and I spent 2 years building uh, a product line that was obsolete by the time that I was done. And so I'm looking at that and I'm going like, do I really feel like chasing technology? Something that is changing so rapidly. Um, no, I don't think so. I, you know, it's like, I don't, I don't know. I, I, right now I currently feel that I want to make my living not selling products. Uh, not physical products, anyways. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to make a living selling other stuff. Selling myself, selling my knowledge, selling my opinion, selling, you know, a bunch of other things. Hopefully I'm going to be successful in the near future and that's what we're going to do. Um, but yeah, that's that's what's happening. Um, yeah, Leon is just kind of like saying that, yeah, we have to wait for the parts anyhow. So with you helping with the knowledge, we would pay the extra tax to deal with the cool guy. <laughs> so he's just kind of <laughs> offering support. And they yeah. would rather buy from someone that they feel that they're they have a connection with or that it's accessible yeah yeah and and i think and i believe in in michael you know what i mean like i've gotten to know him and completely different from you know the people that i decided not to work with uh this guy is completely genuine and he's just a cool guy and 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 he runs his business like you know like i really need to go down there and work more with him because I can learn a lot from him. He's been in business way longer than myself. And um, now, I mean, he's done in a bunch of different markets and a bunch of different uh, things that he's doing. So, yeah, definitely, you know, I appreciate Michael and all his input and stuff. And I, and I see what he does and I know that he's good at it, And I'm like, I'm going to try to help him in any way that I can push some, some sales down his way and, you know. Because he knows how to do it. He's a pro at it. He's got a whole team and staff out there that just kind of process orders and 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 it's he's good at it. So um, John Graham is also asking if he, since he's thinking of taking up a project coming up. Uh huh. He's all. Do you have any good books, channels, forums that are oh. worth checking out? 
uh, that like kind of show you like in depth project explanations? Ah, uh, man, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, I don't. Well, like here's the thing. Um, Jay I, Garcia, YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did do a lot of reading and a lot of research. Um. When when I was thinking about doing the samba, right, and it was all online. It wasn't like any printed books, um, e even though they might be out there. I I, I am not aware of them. Um, so I I do know that like yeah. So forums. I think I looked at like a lot of like the 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 ones that like the info that I was looking for was applicable from like smaller projects, right? Like there's the 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 something sphere. What's that? Oh man, I can't remember the the name of the blog. There's one that is like deals with the um, with like bicycles and all that stuff. And so some of the like the info there transfers transfer over. Um, I I mean yeah, you can you can go watch Jack's videos. You know what I mean? Like he explains to detail what they're gonna do and like theories behind a lot of stuff. Um, it is an investment because they're so long-winded and, and then there's so many of them and, you know, they're not very, <laughs> they're, it's not easy to search. Um, but the, he does have great information. Um, I know he likes to take credit for like the stuff that, you know, I, I learned everything that I know through watching this thing. The truth was that I was almost done putting the Samba together by the time I found out who he was. My very first video that I put on online was basically telling them that I was going to go to EVCON, that I had just found out about EVCON and I'm going to go. And so there are in other sources of info out there. You just have to look for them. Um, and put up with the three hours worth of <laughs> Yes. So, yeah, I mean, definitely... Um, yeah, I don't know. You know, it's like so crazy, like... It's hard for me to see like what kind of information you would need because it's it just seems like so straightforward to me. You know what I mean? Like I I know I put tons of hours researching stuff and looking and playing around and understanding concepts, uh, mechanical ones and electrical ones and you know like electronic and stuff. Um, th that like for me it just seems like super straightforward thing, and I'm I'm thinking like why would you need to like read anything, you know, just go and do it, you know, it's like pick this thing and, but the, the, uh, yeah, it, it's, I'm kind of removed from that now from, um, for a couple of years because it's, it's been so long since I did that. Um, and I haven't really taken on that, a new project other than that Rover, but it's, it, we're just so early on the, the early phases of that project. I think that I didn't, um, haven't been, um, I haven't really got into it. And then I was excited about that project because that one dealt with a bunch of different stuff that I didn't have to deal with the Samba. Like the vacuum pumps and the AC compressors and the, all that other stuff that the Samba doesn't have, but modern cars do. And so, yeah, like... Um, so, like, for example, Leon has got a good example of, like, stuff that he's... Oh, I have so much knowledge on EV stuff. But like, if I was gonna start my project, he's like, I still don't know what motor to buy. Like, let's say I was gonna buy something for Michael. He's like, I still mm -hmm. don't really know. Like, he goes, I, he goes, don't trust Jack. <laughs> uh, but so I mean, maybe you can go through the whole process. Not go through the whole process, but in a quick way, just talk about like how you would even decide. Oh, I Depending see. Depending on the type of project you're doing, like how you even come to the conclusion of this is the thing I'm gonna use. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so I mean, like there. So there are, oh, you look at the market right now, right? And and there are, like, I I wouldn't even consider any of the DC, right? I mean, there's, there's unless you're, like, in racing, um, and unless you, you want it to be different or something, or you don't want a daily driver, you want some specialty car or whatever, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't look at the DC stuff, uh, with, uh, Fnatic's going out of business. I mean, the number one controller that was round that had enough power to have a car that, you know, that would go. Um, 
it, it's much harder. I, I guess there's still the the other, the green, the the two K Zillas and the other controllers, right? But but it's kind of limited, right? Um, so I would look for a daily driver, something that you can drive every day, and even if you want to take it and, and you know spin tires every once in a while. Uh, there are some motors that are available, right? Like the HP EVS. Like those are turnkey solutions. Like there's nothing to figure out. All you have to do is just figure out what your gearing is going to be for later. If you're going to put it to a transmission or if you're going to go direct or, you know, you're going to, whatever it, it is. Um, and they have a bunch of versions of those. Like that's the cool thing. When I looked at into making that rover, I thought like I don't really want to do something experimental because I, it was going to be for a client, you know, someone that is not inclined to be tinkering with the car. So I thought it's got to be bulletproof. And when you look at those motors, like I have an Asamba um, that from HPVS and the Curtis controller, that's that's bulletproof technology right there. That that controller's mass produced. It's used on a bunch of things across a bunch of markets from forklifts all the way to like, you know, um, those little those little things, the canisters that use those arms that take up the electricians up to fix like power lines and stuff. All those hydraulic pumps uh, applications on mining applications. And so um, that stuff, it's like bulletproof like you're not gonna have to figure a whole lot into that system the controller and the motor and so if you have enough power i mean once you figure out how it sides a vehicle and how fast you're gonna want it to go and how quick you want it to be then you're gonna be determined if one of those motors is gonna be good um as it turns out the bigger motors that they had they weren't really that much better and so that's why they discontinued them and so now it's gonna be like how many you're gonna use you know if you if you just want a daily driver that just gets you from point A to point B and is reliable, maybe one of those little motors is going to do. It, they don't have tons of power. They have, um, you know, it's like 80 horsepower or whatever. You know, that's 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 what they're capped at because of the thing, because of the controller. If you want more than that, then you can do what Michael just did with this with this BW bus. He put two of those together. Um, and then you have twice the torque. Now all of a sudden you're talking about, oh, I got 150, 160 horsepower. Now it makes a car kind of get up and go. Um, there are other motors that, that you can use, right? Like, then there are other controllers, but I don't really see anybody using them that much. Um, I always wanted to use a Scott Drive on one of these AC50 motors because I know that the reason why this motor is only 80 horsepower is because of the controller not because of the motor i think the motor can handle a lot more probably up to 100 kilowatts so a scott drive would be able to 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 provide that power um no one is doing it i have seen anyone do it and they have they've kind of been under the radar or whatever um then there's a bunch of other like routes you can go where like you can try it and figure oem stuff right like that's what jack is doing with this all this motors that he's got um that's another route and then you can get bigger motors uh up to 100 kilowatts um but it, there, it takes a little bit more work now you're gonna have to like use third-party uh electronics to be able to to figure the canvas and that whole thing um so yeah it just depends how you want to go like there is already there, there is like the crate engine route, you know, when like HPVS, any other motors and using uh, using several of them in your car just to increase power. Um, and then there's the, like the more experimental doing like doing the OEM stuff. So it just depends how 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 dirty you want to get your hands um, and then what kind of vehicle you have, you know. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of there's a bunch of questions. No, um, so Hooch is saying, Hooch, I'm currently tearing apart laptop batteries. How many 18650 <laughs> batteries would I need on the Samba to meet your 100 mile goal? Oh, to meet the 100. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, there's an easy way to figure this out. Let's let's 
I will need my calculator for that though. So check it out. My Samba does three, uh, in the average, about 300 watt hours per mile. No, yeah, watt hours per mile. Is it watt hours? Yeah. Um, right? So let's say, so 300, right? Wait, how do I do this? Oh man, I just gotta. So, so to get a hundred miles, uh, you're going to need, well, 30 kilowatts, right? Yeah, so you're going to need 30 kilowatts of battery to go a hundred miles. And you need a little bit more because you don't want to run your batteries, you know. You might, I don't, you know, it's like, dep depending on your vehicle, but the Samba is 300. So then 30 kilowatts... Let's say that you are going to do the same thing I did and you're only going to use batteries that are 2,000 milli, uh, milliamps or, or more, right? So then you're at 2 amp hours per cell. Um, 2 amp hours times 3.7 volts, which is the nominal voltage of the battery, equals to 7.4. 7.4 watts what hours what hours yeah what hours per per cell so then now you have to divide 30,000 into 7.4 okay oh okay go ahead so okay. that is going to be 4060 4054 batteries okay so he's got about currently 108 <laughs> Yeah, you, you got about another uh, 3,900, uh, 3,950 batteries. Um, if you were to use new batteries, like the 18650Bs, NCR, and whatever, the new 3,400 milliamps from Panasonic, then you get about 12 watt hours per, per battery, and so now you're talking about less batteries. The, the the ones that I have currently on the Samba, or half of the pack, the 24 kilowatts uh, from the Tesla modules, are 2,600 milliamps. So they're they're quite a lot better. I, there's still there's there's quite a bit of them in the, in the Samba, you know. Um, 44 kilowatts. <laughs> so. These are 5,000 roundup. Yeah, 5,000. Then you'll have a battery that. Uh, Pete just came to say hello to Pete McWade. Um, he saw a few of us oh, yeah. working on DIY inverter from Johannes from Germany. Oh yeah, yeah. We okay. can utilize the power. We can utilize the power sections of non-usable inverters and just replace the computer part. Just oh yeah, the yeah. Test bench. Yeah. My power section will be set for 600 amps, and not sure about the voltage. I can go up to 1600 volts. Woo! So yeah, th that is similar to what that one guy is doing with the uh, with the Tesla Model S motor and controller, right? I think that he took it apart and he's using the power section of that inverter, and then he's using his own logic. He's he's doing a DIY thing, uh, which uh, yeah, sounds like a cool project. It's uh, that's like, you know. That if you're inclined to like doing coding and doing like electronic stuff, uh, that might sound appealing to you. If you're like sort of like me, like I'm interest, I'm interested in there, but I don't know if I have the patience. I gave it a shot, and I kind of gave up in some of those projects that I that I did, like like the charger, right? That was a simple project. Um, in concept, but as a concept, it's a simple project. I kind of understand the the basics and the theory behind all the stuff but then getting in there and debugging and doing the like to give an example like i was trying to figure out the arduino stuff right and i'm like okay i'm gonna do a simple thing i just want to like turn lights on and off figure that right i just i want to figure out how to do like turn a switch on and then have this light blinking turn this other switch on and then have this other lights blinking at different rates and stuff and I'm cracking my head trying to do that, and it's taking me a long time. Then Misa jumps on it, and then he doesn't know anything about electronics. He's like, he knows how to code 
a website, you know, and then he's like, oh, this is just like similar to the, boom. Like 10 minutes, he's done. He's got this little things blinking and stuff. So, I, you know, it's like, I don't have the skill set to be good and fast at that stuff. I, I want, I have the interest and I want to do it, but perhaps maybe it wasn't the, like the best thing that I was going to do, you know, and so I gave it a shot. It's still halfway done there. I'm thinking like one day I'm going to get to it, but in reality, you know, I probably am not going to get to it. And so some of those projects, that's, that's the way they are. And so, and so that, that's, you have to kind of be honest with yourself and, and put yourself like, where do I fit in this thing? Am I really going to? you know, solder, you know, uh, IGBTs together and do a, like a, a controller, you know, that is going to be better or cheaper or is going to do the thing better than whatever's uh, commercially available. Or do I want to spend my time, you know, uh, welding the, the structure to mount this 200 pound motor in a car? Or, or do I just want to drive it? You know, I, like, so like, I, where do you fit in that whole thing and all the tasks? That it takes to do um, a car, you know, like I could have gone more DIY uh, uh, while doing the Samba and, and do like some op open source controller and do a DC motor and stuff. But then I chose not to, you know. I thought like, nah, that's gonna take forever. I gotta do all this metal work. I gotta do. I'm like, I wanna, I wanna set my goal where it's reachable, and so I'm just gonna do this thing, take the stuff off the shelf, put it in here, and then I can tackle things like the battery. You know, it's like the battery is a big one. No one has an answer other than just give me a bunch of money and then do it. And so that's the reason why I embarked embarked on, on to like figuring out if there was some cheaply available cells available, you know, somewhere um, in stuff that people were throwing away, which I think there, there was. I think at one point there were millions of these batteries ending up in landfills and and be, or or ending up in like processing you uh, uh places where they they would recycle them you gotta remember for 10 years these cells were in every single laptop that was sold around the world and so in millions and and you know a lot of them i want to say maybe half of them were not quite ready to and to be processed and to be recycled but they did because no one else no one found a, a use for them no one found a quick easy way to break them apart and use them and repurpose them and use them in like a, in another less um demanding application than a laptop right like maybe having a store a, a energy storage in your house maybe we could have been doing 10 years ago we could have been doing like a power wall out of recycled Laptop sells. If I can go in time, I'd probably be a millionaire if I had, you know, done that. Now the 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 thing is like, it's it's probably less because not all the laptops have those cells anymore. Now they have pouch cells because um, because they're you know the the thin the thinness the of the uh, of the laptops. And so the only reason that they're still alive is because of Tesla has picked them to be the cell type that is going to drive their vehicles and so that's why they're they're still in production and that's why uh they're again they're still kind of relevant but i mean we're not gonna i don't think we're gonna get too many from you know from laptops anymore i think it's gonna be you know salvage cells from other from vehicles already that tesla has put together either for themselves or if they ever doing for other man manufacturers and stuff so um pete is just he was saying he was agreeing yeah paying the butt the whole digital thing um but there are three right now with run vehicles with these inverters oh that's cool um he says your bus and the work you did on it rocks i watched from the beginning i commend you for the work you have done so i think you should just at least acknowledge all right thank you pete appreciate appreciate all the support and all the cool comments. Um, um, this new guy, Brian, says, is there a motor mount on the Samba or does the motor just hang off the transaxle? Yeah, the motor just, just hangs off the transaxle. Um, I don't know. The uh, the German engineers, they they hung the internal combustion engine off of the transaxle. And 
this one's smaller. And this one's smaller and lighter, and so I figure if they could do it, and there's cars that are 60 plus years old, you know, running around. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, if you want to choose a platform that's really easy to convert to electric, <laughs> there's none easier than the BW platform. And there's plenty of different body styles to pick from. And they're all, almost all, going up in value. So whatever you buy right now, in 10 years, you're almost guaranteed that it's going to be worth more. Which is completely opposite from a lot of other cars, you know. Like any of the modern cars, anyways. Yeah. So it's a good investment. Cool. Um, I guess it's kind of winding down, unless you have anything else. It's a, we're at a minute and five. I mean, an hour and five. Oh, okay. So we're about an hour. Uh, I don't know what time, how long we took to actually start. Oh, yeah, that's right. We did start kind of late. All right. Well, um, yeah, there's going to be quite a bit of work, guys. Um, I've been struggling, 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 struggling this, this last... Uh, man, I feel like I've been struggling for years, but... <laughs> But not more than now, you know, it's like I, I'm super busy shipping orders, but it just feels like I'm not, I'm swimming against the current, you know what I mean? Um, but doing, taking on these video projects, I think, you know, that's what's, that's the challenge. I'm saying like, I'm not going to let this day job beat me and submit me, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to go down without a fight, so I'm still going to take on some time this next month, this next few weeks to do this project with the Samba. We still have the other project that we have to get to. We're just building a whole new car that is remote controlled and it's going to be electric. And we have a, a power train there that I need to take apart and study it and try to get it working outside of the vehicle and, and maybe like figure out how to spoof some of the stuff. Um, these are these are motors that are not as attractive as like you know the Model S motors and or some of the other ones you know because they're 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 rated at 55 kilowatts but they're only actually run they're capped around 30 uh, and so they're not very attractive right they're like what do you want a 30 kilowatt power mo you know motor or whatever that that's what why what by the way Nisa told me that they're they're governed to 60 miles per hour is that what it yeah. is. Top speed 60 miles an hour on that transaxle that, that is coupled with. Um, the thing is, is that there's a lot of them. There's warehouse. We, we were at warehouses that is just floor to ceiling <laughs> with all these motors. And they're worthless right now because no one knows how to use them. And because of legal issues, you can't use them and implement them the way the way that they are you know what i mean because because they own the software they own the whatever um uh, so so they have to be hacked in order to be used but but no one's throwing them away they're just they're, we're storing them someone's storing them and spending the money and all the stuff to store them somewhere but as soon as that is figured out then you know there's gonna be projects where we're gonna be like well screw it give me four of them we'll put four of them in this car you know uh then that makes us a, a, a decent size motor, you know what I mean? Like now you have the power to run a decent sized car at a decent pace. Um, and so they're tiny little motors, this is big, they look big because they have all this other stuff. But if I can, if I start working on the mechanicals to be able to couple, you know, a couple of them together or three of them together, they're not much bigger than three of those motors are not going to be much bigger than the AC50, but they are going to have more torque, you know, it's going to be. If we can open them up and hack them all the way to fit their their top 55 kilowatt thing, then you're going to be looking at a motor this big, this long, and, you know, that is going to be 150 kilowatts. Um, and there's going to be plenty and plenty and plenty of those to, to go around to whatever project you want. Um, so th that's the work that kind of we have to do. Uh, I'm going to be forcing myself to kind of go out back there and just... Just get busy and get dirty and go through all the stuff. Uh, you know, last year I I was wishing that I had this stuff here. This year I've had it there for weeks now. I haven't even gotten and touched it just because I've been here slain away. You know what I mean? And so the hopefully things work out this next 
few weeks and you, I'll be able to upload a bunch of content and a bunch of stuff that it's going to be interesting to see to, for you guys to see. Um, and then and then in mid January is the trip, so then we get to test it all and who knows, maybe break down or who knows? I mean, you know, you never know what's going to happen. There's going to be two electric vehicles. Uh, the, ch the challenge is to try different things and and have fun at the same time. And so maybe there might be three two. after yesterday. Well, maybe we yeah. were trying to get this guy yesterday with the with with the electric Kia to to tag along with us because then that would be three vehicles going. But he only has eighty miles, so he wouldn't be able to make it. He was gonna tow. I don't know. We'll see. But you know, there's there's also the other guy that's electric. Uh, what's his name? David. Uh, yes, David. Yeah. David. He's it's got. Electric. He's got a, a several cars now. So. Um, you never know. Maybe we can convince him to tag along with us and go. And so there might be more. Might be now. Now it's, it's a caravan. A, also, just so you know, uh, Brian Rice. Brian Rice keeps saying, "Oh, I got the wrong guy." Um, he's saying that he's he's thinking of converting a bug, and everyone is like, "Do it, do it!" Like it's, it's just it's such a fun project. He saw this electric, and he likes how clean their projects look. So he's like, oh, "Yeah, he wants to do it." So he was he's the guy talking about asking about the motor just hanging. Oh yeah, yeah. So he's mm -hmm. like, "I think EV has a kit that you can just buy." Yeah, EV, EV West has a kit that you can buy for all the. Uh... For all the yeah, all all the BW models now, I think, and it it includes everything except the batteries. But I think now even with the batteries, they might. He was telling me that the cool thing about the the Tesla batteries is that he would be able to make kids that were like I just over ten grand or something like twelve something, everything everything that you needed, which is a crazy number, right? Considering, like, when you look at how much I've spent <laughs> in the Samba. Um, so, yeah, and, and it's the cool thing is about that, like, he's doing the kits where you don't have to hack a lot into the car. You just kind of install them and stuff. Um, and so, if, if you like to tinker around with the EV and that's the thing that, that attracts you, maybe that's not the way to go. But if you just want to build a car and then drive it, definitely... It's the best way to go. You gotta hit him up, hit Michael up. He's 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 always helping someone. Um, he's always on the phone when I'm down there, like giving advice to people on how to do it, and and you know offering the products and stuff. Um, yeah, do it. Uh, say bye to Drunk Ramen. He's leaving. Uh, Darren is taking off, and he says we gotta do our own show called Fully Charged. Fully Charged. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a channel. I think it's called. No, what is it? I think there's a channel that is called Fully Charged, but yeah, let's do it. Thank you guys for coming along and spending some time with us and just talking about, you know, whatever. EV cars and the next the projects that are going to come on. All right, guys, uh, we're going to cut it out here. We'll see you guys next week. Hopefully next week we'll have a little bit more of show and tell. Maybe we'll have some... Maybe we'll go down there in the back and do it in the back over there in the shop and then we'll get to play with some of the parts and stuff. All right. Um, all right. See you guys later to next week. Uh, thank you for thank you for spending some time with us. Cool. Now all of a sudden there's all these questions. We'll talk about that next time. Next time. What it takes to register a vehicle... Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> also, Pete also converted. Wait, did you stop it or I'm stopping it? No, I haven't stopped. Okay, I'm gonna stop it.